Hello everybody, I came across an article recently where the headline states that TCS CEO says AI will not cut jobs in India and worldwide. Well, this was a bummer for me because based on all the research that I have been doing and all the analysis that I have conducted so far, it is indicating that AI will definitely take out a few jobs and I'll explain how that is going to happen as well in this video. But here, the largest IT services company CEO in India is stating that AI will not cut any jobs. And I started browsing through other newspapers and similar headlines. TCS CEO is against this view of AI cutting jobs in India, but as I go through the article, the first line interpretation is completely different. It states, generative AI would not lead to an overall reduction in jobs. Now that's a different understanding. Here, what they are saying is, AI will take out a few jobs and it will also create a few jobs. So net net, there is no job loss. That's very different from what the headline states. We are already very confused with respect to what's happening in the technology space. We do not have any kind of control with respect to the longevity of our careers. How long we are going to work with the technology changes, how long are we going to stay relevant? In this scenario, these kind of statements do make us uncomfortable. Now, the only way is to stay ahead of the curve a bit in understanding the news, what's really happening in the AI world. And here comes my three recommendations regarding podcasts. Highly recommended because experts do come on these podcasts and they share their opinions. And this is at least one to two months before something is already out in the media. So you going through these kind of niche podcasts will help you stay up to date. And the three podcasts are number one, Wall Street Journal's Tech Briefing. The second one is the Stack Overflow podcast. And the third one is Bloomberg Technology podcast. I'm not recommending you to go and watch every single podcast, but there are definitely some interesting ones. For example, there is a topic around, will AI be the next dot-com bubble? And the discussion is fascinating. And there is another podcast around why there is a lot of hype around AI, but there aren't many projects in the production line. Why is that the case? Well, these things will keep you engaged and also will give you a fresh perspective so that you are a little bit more certain about what is going to come and be, be more prepared. So before you go ahead and start understanding the AI news through these podcasts, let me just set the ground for you with respect to what's happening in the AI world right now. What are the type of AI projects that companies are taking up? Let's start with a simple example. Imagine there is a company which is collecting data in your region, age, gender, a lot of shopping preferences, all these kind of things. So, and they have millions of people's data records. And what would you you expect in the age column you would expect typically between one year old to probably 100 120 years old that's it right you wouldn't expect 500 or 700 so what AI is coming and doing is they are saying we'll automate all these simple statistical analysis and if there are any random errors will flag them. So instead of three people going and doing this kind of statistical analysis, AI is replacing the three people with only one or two people now just looking at the errors and making sure that AI is not making any mistakes. So three people work is now done by two people and this is called as productivity gains. This is very simple but close to 50 to 60 percent of the AI related projects are in this space. Productivity gains. How can we save costs instead of three people where can we have only two people and this is just the starting point if you think about it in the next two years three years the entire ai development is not about just saving some money it is also about creating something new. For example, the next immediate frontier in the next one year to 18 months could be how the entire call center systems would be changed. Rather than the call center agents right now being given a script and they have to just follow through the script, the Gen AI systems can take over those scripts and improvise on top of that based on the data that is continuously fed to them. Now, this is how it is evolving, but at this point in time, at least, it's all about productivity gains. And please do go through all the three parts podcast regularly, not every single day, so that you know what type of projects are going to be enabled. I'm giving you the links to all the three podcasts in the description box. Please do check them out. Now, the second thing that you need to be aware 
about this entire AI space is whatever field you come from, whether it is IT, whether it is supply chain, manufacturing, electrical, electronics, solar, doesn't really matter. This is a good time for you to see what are the adjacent areas with respect to your own skill set where I can start leveraging some type of AI support. Almost all the developers are now almost being forced to use Microsoft Copilot. I'm sure a lot of you would have already registered. Now in the next six to eight months, you would be forced to use it because of the productivity gains. Similarly, coding is the first thing, then digital marketing is the another area, content creation is another area, analytics is another area. Now you will see a lot of other areas starting to flood in. So I cannot tell you which tool exactly that you should start using but whatever is your domain see if there are any AI tools adjacent to that domain if any influencers in your domain are speaking about such tools on Twitter or on LinkedIn try to learn these tools if you have to spend anywhere between 5,000 to 50,000 1 lakh rupees it's an opportunity cost if you do not take it it might be very costly for you. I don't want to take out the names of any courses just because I want you to take this suggestion seriously and see if there are any tools that you should be learning. The third thing is make sure you are at least completely checking off all the basics related to AI. It could be University of Helsinki's simple course, Elements of AI. It's a complete PDF kind of a course which you can complete in four hours but you will understand the basics of AI. Then of course, there is deep learning. You get probably the first one month subscription for free on Coursera. If you audit the course, try to pick up some of the basics which are related to you. I'll also give you a link in the description box related to free AI courses that are available on the internet. Please do check out that video. The fourth thing that I would recommend is if you are already comfortable in a job and if you do not see any kind of threat, still it's a good idea for you to upskill because there is no downside risk attached to it. It's only upside potential. So why not take that chance? Because according to World Economic Forum and also articles from Economic Times, there is a huge talent gap and one of the reasons why a lot of AI projects are not in production mode is because there are not enough skilled people who know AI to the complete extent which is required to bring projects into the production mode. Whatever level you are in, pick up the AI skills at the same level and then you can make that shift slowly. If we come back to the first statement that the TCS CEO was talking about, AI will not take your job. The person sitting right next to you who knows AI will be taking your job. I hope this video gives you clarity and gives you enough push to go ahead, upskill yourself and do something meaningful with the new skill that you acquire. This is not a video to scare you off, but this is a video for you to push and go ahead in the right direction. I hope you take it in the right spirit and do share it in your network. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye bye.